Hello YouTube frogs and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be recapping my thoughts on the 1.6 live stream. I have already gone through the live stream myself just to take my own notes what's going to be happening in 1.6. Firstly, we must pay our respects to the opening image here. Master Jean, I want to ask for some time off because I want to go somewhere. Oh, speaking of which, Jean looks so fresh here. Holy, I am admiring respectfully. Well, as you guys can see here, skins are here, and we'll be discussing those at the tail end of the video where they talk about it. Cool? Let's jump to the first thing that I want to discuss really quick. Our first playable Inazuma character, Kaedahara Kazuha. I'm probably butchering his name, but as you guys can see here, this is a demonstration of our new first inazuma playable character and then we can take a look at his skills really quick so we first have his e his e was an aoe vacuum move or an aoe suck before lifting him up and preparing a plunge attack so the plunge attack is going to be a nemo damage and the basic attacks afterward that we saw in the video are physical damage so first impressions is that he's kind of like it's like a mixture of venti and xiao but it's kind of weird because i feel like with his type of play style it lifts him up and then he has to plunge it out to get down. So the amount of time that it takes for him to do damage is actually very little. So it's more of a kind of supportive stance is what I believe that his elemental skills can be focused on. So that's the E. The Q. This is a seriously beautiful design of a Q. That's his elemental burst. Um, it looks like a relatively large AoE. It is not a vacuum like Vendi's ult if you guys take a look. So you guys can see that, so that swirl is a Q tick of damage. And you guys can see that the enemies are not knocked back or sucked into the circle. So that means, uh, unlike Venti, uh, Kazuha's Q is only damage based and does swirl because it's a Nemo based, but it does not vacuum like Venti's Q does. His E on the other hand does vacuum. So it's kind of like a reverse in a sense, but it is a relatively large AOE. So it's like a, it's like a realm to fight within. And it looks like based on the video timer that I calculated, the damage over time of his Q ticks every two seconds. So keep that in mind. My first impression is that he's like a sword venti. His E is a self plunge. We'll have to wait for the multipliers, but it looks like we'll have to take a look at one, the actual E damage and two, his plunge multiplier for his total quote unquote E damage, right? So I'm going to think that his E skill damage is going to be probably less than venti's and jeans. Obviously my skills are a higher level, but venti's E is 442 press damage and 608 hold damage and then jeans e which i have a level 11 so it's kind of a cheat it's 555 skill damage so uh, my first impression that is probably going to be less press damage here because his press launches him up and he does free plunge damage so we'll have to see what his plunge multiplier is at level six probably going to assume that it might be around the same i i don't i don't know what the numbers would be like but we'll take a look at that so keep that in mind uh when we're looking at skill damage given that he's a newer character released um i'm assuming that his total damage is going to be higher but again that is my impression on him uh in the actual video jeans va does also mention that his passive talent gives elemental bonus damage to allies when kazuha triggers a swirl reaction so i'm thinking maybe a little bit like a sucrose transfer of damage instead of elemental mastery uh it's kind of interesting we'll see how much of a damage boost it is and in comparison to what sucrose is able to give in terms of elemental reaction damage like how we've been using sucrose to enhance vaporize and melt damage we'll see if kazuha can equalize that damage or provide more who knows so uh, I am a very big fan of his design. I think that the looks are very intriguing. I think his Q is beautiful. Um, I think the lift up and the plunge is also a nice mechanic. He's more of a supportive design from what I'm seeing because I'm assuming that when you press Q that you can switch him off the field and it still does damage. So it's persistent. His E is something that you can fast swap into, I'm guessing, because the lift and the plunge doesn't seem like something that you would continuously do afterwards since he's focused on a Nemo damage. All right, let's move over to banner info. We see here that Klee is going to be rerun first. And this is probably three weeks after Eula, which was May 18th. So I would expect Klee coming around June 8th, 9th, which is like the Tuesday, Wednesday of that week. That means that I believe that Kazaha will be three weeks after that. So probably expect around June 29th, June 30th. So like the end of June for Kazaha to come out. This gives you guys a little bit of a timeline to figure out uh, how you want to uh, prepare for this. Kazaha being on the second banner gives us content creators a chance to prepare materials for release. Moving forward to new weapons right here. They look really nice. Uh, the Freedom Swarm weapon is the newest addition to the Millennial Movement. The Millennial Movement is the weapons like these. Elegy for the End and Song of Broken Pines. They both are part of the Millennial Movement. So I will expect this sword to have a four sigil type of proc rate, which we'll see what the actual stats give. 
I mean, if it's going to be released with Kazaha, because it is a sword, we'll have to see how they're going to make it. I'm guessing it's going to be a supportive sword, but we have honestly no idea. So one thing that we have to keep in mind with this Freedom Sworn new sword is how does it compare to the other swords that we've gotten? So like Aquila Favonia, which is currently on the banner with uh, Song of Broken Pines, and also previously run uh, Jade Cutter. Cool. So that's uh, my thoughts on Freedom Sworn. Now let's look at the new bow. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I don't want to butcher it. But let's just call it the Waltz Bow. Okay. So the Waltz Bow, the design very much looks like Fischl and especially the name also reminds me of Fischl. So I'm going to think they might have intended it to be built around Fischl. We'll have to see whether it's a DPS or a support based bow, depending on the substats. Complete overview of these weapons. I feel like uh, we already have a really large selection of bows. So uh, that takes a look at the weapons. Quick run through on the new boss. So this is the new Magu Kenki, new monster. It's a Nemo Crowd dual element. It has two masks on either side of him that block projectiles. Some of them is a phantom at low HP. That's the quick TLDR of that. All right, uh, moving on to Archon Quest. So we have a new Archon Quest. This is one step closer to Inazuma, centered around the new character that we have, Kazuha. So I'm I'm not sure if this would be considered as quote unquote Kazuha's story, but that seems to be like what they're implying. I'm not actually sure though. We'll see. Let me know in the comments if you think that like this is what is meant to be for like quote unquote Kazuha's story. Might be maybe like the same thing as uh, John Lee, for example. I've been doing kind of just like some chill story on my stream, twitch.db for that xlice. We take a week break between when it's released and when we actually do it to give you guys time to do them yourselves if you want to just like chill through. I mean, I'm excited. Let's move on to the new event, the new large event, which is... <laughs> Our main event is called... Mid Midsummer Island, Mid Island Adventure Event. So this is going to be uh, the main event. It's going to be consisting a lot of mini events that I would consider uh, inside of it. So what we get from this, and they go over this as well in the whole thing, but I'm going to go over it again. Free four-star book. We have the Dodoco Tales. It's like the Festering Desire and the Windbloom Ode from previous events. So I'm assuming there's going to be like an 1.5x enhancement for it to get that weapon and we'll also be able to get all the refinements from the event as well catalysts have been a limited choice for free to play players we have the mop of mare and we have the prototype amber and both of those aren't like strong suits for for dps catalysts so i'm looking forward to see if this dodoco tails will be the standard for four star catalyst dps because we don't have something like prototype archaic for claymores or compound bow for physical bow users or prototype crescent for like ganyu for example you know that kind of thing we're kind of looking for some dps oriented catalyst maybe this will be it we'll see We'll also have to see how this compares to Frostbear, which is the Dragon Spine Catalyst. They also explain that we're going to be getting a new Northlander Billet Trove. So what this is, is it allows you to choose a prototype of your choice. So that's Claymore, Bow, or whatever it is that you want to craft for like Crescent Pike or, you know, any any of those. I think it's really good for uh, newer players because it's, it's really hard in the early game to be able to get this. It was a meme when we started first playing in September of 28th, right? That was the first month. Prototypes have always been a troublesome thing to achieve from the weekly bosses. So this is a, a step in a more positive direction for free-to-play and budget players. Yeah, I think it's a good, a good addition. And then they do not mention Fragments of Innocence at all. They don't even reference it, so I'm not sure what that's going to be. And then for my interior designers out there, we have some new furnishing blueprints to decorate your teapots with. So that's very pog. And all the events that they have shown, the event looks pretty co-opable from what I've been seeing. So we first have this kind of like, yeah. I mean, it, it, they say it's co-opable, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that it'll be, you know, decently fun. I think the in general area is also quite nice. You guys can see here a little bit of the gameplay here. Kind of reminds me of like Super Mario mini games or like Sonic mini games as well, uh, with the coin feature and stuff. So we'll have to see. There's also gliding and stuff too. And that. So we're gonna skip all the way to the next section, which is skins. So. We don't have any indication, but they are going to be a limited time discount from the character outfit shop. We'll see how much it costs, but at least it's not gacha based. So we definitely it's purchasable. I'm looking forward to it because, uh, you know, this is the next step in towards just. I mean, look at her anyways. So yeah, so here's Barbara. So this one's going to be a free skin. Uh, this is from the new event Echoing Tales, along with other Primo Gems and Rewards. So that's very nice. Quick run through of other mini events. Kaboom Ball Combat, kind of like Mario Tennis, I would say. Never Ending Battle, it's down here. So I'm not really sure what this is. I mean, this seems just like a generic event. 
I don't think it's going to be any, anything too interesting, but we'll take the free free rewards, yeah. And then we have the Vagabond Sword event, which is going to be the new challenge slash difficulty event where we can do expert mode, collect points, do challenges, etc. Probably going to be co-opable like the previous ones have been. So, you know, we'll see when that comes. Lastly, we're going to be going over QOL changes. And I think these are fairly nice, actually. We have handbook improvements. We have new keyboard shortcuts for friendless and party change. And then we have domain details for like enemies, similar to how they show it in the Spiral Abyss. If you select a character from the handbook, it navigates you to the nearest one, right? And when you kill it, instead of having to open up the handbook again, it'll just show you where the next one is. I think that is really nice. It's a really nice feature because it just allows you to consistently keep on TPing to the next one without having to go back to the handbook. It's just a nice QOL feature for uh, monster slayers or overworld slayers out there. I know you guys are farming for some materials and stuff. Secondly, we have O to open up the friends list. Very useful in case you're joining Serena Teapots or just want to co-op with a friend. And then after that, we have party change. I think this one is a really nice feature. Oh my goodness, you guys know pressing escape and going to party is immensely annoying. Having a hockey for this, I think is a very subtle but very nice feature. And then lastly, they have domain details. So in this, we'll be able to see the enemies and all the domains to prepare for them team-wise. This is useful for newer players, not so much veterans, because veterans, we just like add teams in and just slap them. But for newer players that are figuring out how to build team comps against certain enemies, this will help you guys a lot. Cool. Another update to the Serenity Teapot. Slowly able to add eight of our characters to chill in our teapot. That is really amazing. There's a lot of amazing things here. So adding eight of the characters to our teapot will allow them to slowly gain friendship EXP. And when you add them to your party in the overworld, they're able to gain a bonus. So it's like, it's, it's just sociability of the game is improved this way. I think it's a really nice feature. Um, allows us to bond with our characters even more than we already have been. And I think uh, I really like it. Each character will have a special housing set this will unlock a present from that character and a special dialogue. So that's also really neat. And finally, Inazuma preview with Ayaka Chibi figure. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Inazuma is finally coming soon. So we have first some location sneak peeks. We have Watatsumi Island. I love this already. The color palette is beautiful. It's a cool pastel flavor. There's purples, greens, and blues, which is my favorite color palette. Um, I already in love i really can't wait for inazuma to come out so excited and hopefully um electro will shine again and we'll be able to bring back kaching yeah other nice images we have uh Sere island which uh i'm really sure what's going on in the sky but uh yeah that's the thing moving on we have Tsurumi island this is a mysterious island island in shadow and fog i think i honestly this is when i first saw this this is my impression of it it's like ominously peaceful i know it's an oxymoron it's literally how i feel about this it's kind of peaceful but it's kind of spooky so and then we have some other images as well we have a hollow tree um we have plant uh the root stuff and then we have lastly narukami island i'm not sure if this is going to be like a central waypoint location in inazuma but i'm assuming probably that wraps up 1.6 closing thoughts from me is that we do not have a new artifact set for Kazo has to release, uh, which means that for Nemo characters, we're going to be sticking with the Viridescent Dungeon. Uh, so that's going to be the default set, which more likely means that we're going to be, you know, more support based. So just to give a bullet point of all the things that we have, if you guys want to skip to this part, skins coming out. First playable Inazuma character, Kazuha. We have the new banner info with Klee rerun happening first and then Kazuha happening second. I expect the Klee to be June 8th, June 9th, which is three weeks after Yula was released. Kazuha to be three weeks after that, which is around June 29th, June 30th. We have new weapons. We have the Freedom Sworn new five-star sword. We'll have to see how it compares to the Jade Cutter uh, and the uh, Quill of Avonia. We have a new bow, which looks like it's designed for official. And then we have new monster, Magu Kenki, a Nemo Crowd Duel Element. Uh, with two masks that block projectiles and some of the phantom at low HP. New Archon Quest featuring Kazuha and Beidou. So I'm looking forward to that. We also have the main event, Midsummer Island Adventure, which gives us a free four-star book, uh, gives us a free prototype to select from, prototype billet trove thing. They did not mention what Fragments of Innocence are. Character outfits, Jean. It's going to be purchasable through the shop. Barbers is given for free. We have some mini events, Mario Tennis. We have a new challenge event. QL changes, handbook improvements to fighting enemies in the overworld, O key for the friends list, L key for the party change, 
Uh, and then we have domain details for enemies like in the Spiral Abyss. And then we have Serenity Teapot update. Eight characters for Friendship EXP. Special housing set with a special present if you complete it. And then Inazuma preview. And that's it. That should wrap up all of our 1.6 recap. Um, I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I'm pretty excited. I think it is a, it's it's like a, it's a fun patch. Um, I'm looking forward to the future uh, and, and what happens. So I'll be preparing my guides for Klee and Kazaha. I, I will have, you know, probably a decent amount of content. I think it's gonna be less than 1.5, but it's still a very nice amount. So yeah, looking forward to it. I hope you guys are also looking forward to 1.6. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.